But for those who stand in your way and betray you, their day of reckoning will come. Hey everyone, welcome back with Being on Mac, where today we are going to continue our playthrough of WWE Day of Reckoning 2. I don't get it, Teddy. You have me in a match tonight for the WWE Tag Team Championship, but my new tag partner is a surprise? I wonder who it is. That's right, player. Since your original partner, Rey Mysterio, was taken out by the champs last week, I've kept the identity of your new partner top secret. It's gonna be a huge surprise for everyone when he heads out to the ring. Believe that. <laughs> but how am I supposed to come up with a plan to beat Rene Dupree and Kenzo Suzuki if I don't even know who my partner is? And if you're keeping my partner a secret to protect him, doesn't that make me the next likely target? Good point. Listen to me, dog. You're Mr. Pay-Per-View. Well, this is no mercy. So that means that it's your night. And your match is coming up next. So there's no time for the champs to punk you out. Even if they wanted to. Trust me player. You don't get to, you don't gotta sweat it. When you find out who your partner is. Believe Teddy Long. You won't be disappointed. Well if you say so. I just hope whoever it is can hold his own in the ring. Along with Rob. Van. Damn. Now you feel me, player. Holla, holla, holla. Gee, I wonder who that uh, mystery partner is. The following Holy shit, they really is came into the stage from all the way like the to the WWE left. Like You can see him behind the stage for a minute. It's actually pretty cool uh, that Kenzo Suzuki's in this game. And I think around this time, uh, in SmackDown was Raw 2006, I'm always going to bring up other games and compare wrestling games to other games and stuff like that. It's just what I do. Um, I think they still were like La Resistance, but I don't think that they uh, put the rest of La Resistance in this game. Probably because I think they just weren't really relevant at the time. I don't think they were a lot of resistance anymore. I think they just kind of made it that way in 2006. SmackDown was Raw 2006, so that is um, just so that way there was a team in that game. Because this is probably, arguably, the worst time of the Ruthless Aggression Era tag team division. They had like nobody. Still, pretty sick that Kenzo Suzuki was in a, a WWE game, and uh, this one was the game of all games, I should say. Wonder why it wasn't included in uh, SmackDown vs. Raw 2006. I feel like around the PS2 era, there were a lot of, like, interesting people uh, that were kind of omitted from the roster, like mid carders for the most part. It was kind of sad, you know? I mean, they honestly would have missed out on a pretty sizable payday. And, uh, you know, I think it would have been... I, I think mid-carters a lot of the time were what really add uniqueness to the WWE games. Because, I mean, like, around this time, you know, you pretty much know you're always going to have Batista, John Cena, Triple H, Kurt Angle. Uh, you know, all the big names and stuff like that. That's what everybody comes to see, of course. You know, Kane, Undertaker, all the big names and stuff. But, I mean, I think the mid-carters are kind of what helps encapsulate, you know, what the time period was. Which, another interesting thing, I mean, this game is, uh, just kind of... Jeez, I don't remember what I was gonna say. There goes that memory again. <laughs> I wonder what, how the Day of Reckoning series would have handled, uh, ECW the next year in 2006 because a lot of the games kind of like to ignore it a little bit or it was always kind of like third rate which it was in real life and whatnot but like Smackdown was Raw 2007 didn't even have ECW in it despite the fact that it was pretty well established at that point and then on top of that 
uh, it was SmackDown vs. Raw featuring ECW from that point on. And then the actual, when they actually did change it to WWE 12, you know, that's when ECW was already long gone. You know, so I mean, it was kind of goofy, in my opinion, that they waited so long to change the name of the title. And so, literally, the last, like, SmackDown vs. Raw 2000. 11 was the last game to feature ECW, and that's because it was taken out earlier that year. But even that game actually featured ECW in its story mode, I think, quite a bit. Especially Christian's story mode, which well, he wasn't in there for too long, but you know, it was still just kind of cool that they still had that and they had uh, that freaking. Tiffany chick or whatever is the GM still and whatnot. But I don't know, it just would have been interesting to see how some of these side series would have. More than anything, it seems like these games always kind of portrayed ECW as just the antagonist. You know, like they did in SmackDown vs. Raw 2008 and then SmackDown vs. Raw 2009. I mean, it was pretty cool that they actually did have uh, an ECW for the World WrestleMania, so that was pretty cool. CM Punk storyline, which apparently was supposed to originally be Bobby Lashley's, but I don't know, even though it's set came from the original developer, it's still just hard to believe considering just how long Bobby Lashley was out of the company at that point. But that said, I mean, they probably were planning everything they wanted to do. They probably planned everything they wanted to do from game to game, you know, year in advance. Like before they, way before they even start working on it, so I'm assuming that's where that comes from. Or it could be a crock of shit, who knows. But other than that, yeah, ECW was kind of just always treated like as an antagonist or something like that. So that's probably what it would have been in the Day of Reckoning series. It probably would have just been either like a something completely ignored or, you know, something where he would go for like a little bit or maybe something where your character started on before he got up to the main roster of Raw and SmackDown. Apparently, um, speaking of Rene Dupree, he's actually gone on and uh, spoken a few times that ECW, when it was first relaunched, I don't know how true it is, but uh, he said that him and I think Sylvain, Sylvain Grené, I, I can't remember how to pronounce his last name, but La Resistance kind of reunited a little bit. Uh, apparently, he said that when ECW relaunched, they were originally going to have tag team championships, like the ECW tag championships, and uh, while Resistance was supposed to be like the first champions of it, but because Rene Dupree was so messed up and on all these drugs, and this is self-admitted, he said, they uh, just kind of canned those plans. And to me, it's kind of weird because they kind of, like, I think they had like reality, right, which was John Morrison and The Miz, you know, they were SmackDown tag team champions because they didn't make ECW tag team champion, so it was kind of it kind of sounds dumb to me that they would do that when uh, you know they had the full plan of making it at uh, you know ECW tag titles. But it was a lot of like ruthless aggression era talent that kind of went to ECW and kind of died on that brand. Ooh, a lifetime contract. Here we go, we got Teddy Wong once again. Looking kind of disappointed, probably regretting that decision. That said, I, once again, I mentioned earlier, Teddy Wong is definitely probably my best, my favorite GM. Because, yeah, he, he's kind of known for mostly the memes at the time, but he was pretty cool when he was actually out on the roster. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you SmackDown's new tag team champions. Rob Van Dam and Kai. Yeah, sorry, I'm not very good at picking ring names. What do you guys think of the new attire? I'm trying something different here. Since it's a new brand and everything. Now I know the people out there have a lot of questions about the tag team titles and about you, Kai. As a matter of fact, just a few weeks ago, you weren't even on the show. So let me lay it out for you. You see, 
It is my opinion that Kai was wrongfully terminated from his job on Raw. See, he's always been the face general manager. Don't always get that. Yes, there may have been some evidence that Kai was somehow involved in the case of a missing world heavyweight title. But that evidence was purely circumstantial. I agree. This man Kai is a former tag team champion, a former intercontinental champion, and a former world heavyweight champion. His resume speaks for itself, you feel me? As general manager of this show, I see Raw's loss as SmackDown's gain. So that's why I'm proud to announce that I've signed Kai to a lifetime contract here on SmackDown. Like how they had to put the period after the explanation mark. With his level of ability, I have no doubt that this man will help lead SmackDown to a whole new level of success. Believe that. Wow, thanks for all the kind words, Mr. Long. Jeez, that's not a good nickname. And thanks to my new partner, Mr. Thursday Night, Rob Van Dam, for letting me take over for his injured partner. Get well soon, Ray. After my experience on Raw this year, I am truly grateful to SmackDown for taking me in. Jeez, talk about the cheap pops. But speaking of Raw, Stacy, if you're watching, listen to me. It's not what you think. I can explain. Edge, Jericho, and Orton. Can you feel the Jeez, this is not the time to put my personal problems out to the public. Hold out, Holmes. Hold it right there, I say. Before you go on thanking all the members of the Academy, I've got something to say to you. So you got a lifetime contract with SmackDown, huh? Congratulations. That's pretty impressive for a guy with a reputation for lying and stealing. If you work some cheating in there, I'm gonna have to find a new job, Holmes. <laughs> you know, S.A., I got no problem with what you did on Raw. If you did it here, if you did it, but that's not why I'm here. I'm out here because I can't believe that Teddy Long would give you a tag team match on your first night on SmackDown. Well, I'm having a tough time reading today, I guess. Teddy, I know that you wanted to have Kai make a big impression or whatever on his first night, but come on, Holmes. A title match? Everyone knows that Booker T and I were next in line once Rey Mysterio got hurt. No offense to you, RVD, but where I come from, a new partner means that you start at the bottom and work your way up all over again. Me and Booker should have gotten that opportunity at no mercy. See, these guys weren't a real team, right? Now you listen to me, Latino Heat. I make the rules on SmackDown, not you. So it's gonna be like this. Tonight, you'll get a non-title tag team match against RVD and Kai. That is, if the champions agree to give you that match. Boy, talk about bias. Now listen up, player. If you win, you'll get a title match in four weeks at Survivor Series. But if you lose, you and Booker T will be the ones who are gonna start all over again at the bottom. You feel me? Oh, I feel you. I feel you, S.A. So what do you say, RVD? Do they get the match tonight? I say that's cool. Everything is cool when you miss Thursday night. Right, guy? Bring him on, Teddy. Holla, holla, holla. Jeez. I'm really kissing ass now. Can you dig it? Yeah, the only face authority figures that I can think of that were actually uh, very fun to watch were Teddy Long and, uh, of course, Mick Foley as a uh, commissioner. Shawn, Shawn Michaels as commissioner was pretty good, too, but he wasn't really ever there, I feel like. I just feel like, yeah, Booker T, this game, like, this shows, like, how bad the tag scene was. 
at the time because I mean they have to kind of make up tag teams. I mean maybe they were a team, Booker T and Eddie Guerrero, but even if they were, I mean, I don't know. I mean it just seems kind of silly. Like these guys could have easily been in their own, uh, you know, storylines. I feel like, but who knows? I mean we'll have to see what they actually do with the storylines. SMP Stool Legend. Yeah, I'm a bit of a uh, WWE Mattel action figure collector. And uh, actually, they just came out with this Lowrider, which, uh, for whatever reason, they gave like the, the figure to Rey Mysterio. But yeah, like, they actually have a Lowrider toy that you can buy now, like at Walmart. I think it would have been for. I think it's because recently Ray paid homage to uh, Eddie Guerrero at WrestleMania. Uh, one of the WrestleManias in recent years. And uh, I think that's why they packed the figure with Ray Mysterio. But, I mean, come on. We, we all know the World Riders associated with Eddie Guerrero. Oh, yeah. I feel like this was just the outfit that every game gave Eddie Guerrero around this time. Which, I don't know, it kind of sucks because, I mean, he had quite a few different color options, so. It's too bad we never got, like, the, the red tights or whatever. I think maybe here comes the pain and had the green tights. But obviously, he had, like, more than that as well. He's the ref had full opportunity to get out of the way of that. He just kind of ran into it at the last second. Imagine if this was something that happened like every time guys wrestled matches on TV. Just ref constantly getting hit by accident all the time. And I mean that in the way of like literally like it would not affect the match, they just kind of got their asses kicked the whole match, so. I do have to wonder, so like, if I were to, th if like, uh, in a match, if you were to throw somebody into the ref, like accidentally, would you get disqualified for that? I'm sure there's been storylines that have covered something like that, I just can't think of it. But one thing I do loathe in this game are freaking tag team matches, man. So this is probably going to be another long one. Now that I think about it, I don't remember Eddie Guerrero doing much in that. Well, actually, now that I think about it, I was going to say I don't think I remember him doing much in Day of Reckoning, the first game, but... That was because he was on SmackDown. So you guys have that memory. <laughs> Speaking of which, I hope that we see, like, uh, we didn't see guys like Chris Masters on Raw. So, I mean, I'm hoping that we get some more mid-card guys. Like, uh, you know, it'd be, it'd be cool if we have a, a few with Carlito or something like that. Imagine if we had one more year and uh, freaking Ken Kennedy was in a day of reckoning game. You know he would be happy to be featured. He'd have to be featured in the freaking story mode. Alright, good, good. I'm just gonna drag him, let go, and go for a pin. Come on, RVD. Huh? <laughs> that 
<laughs> okay. Everybody who's watched knows what that's supposed to be. But I mean, come on. They couldn't have done the full scene. Like, why the hell was it just half of the scene? Jeez, Eater. Hey, Teddy. Did you see what happened last week? I can't believe that Booker and Eddie cheated to win. Actually, let me rephrase that. I can't believe that Booker and Eddie got away with cheating to win that tag match last week. Well, player, the referee didn't see what happened when the lights went off. And under the circumstances, he had no choice to make that call. And since the referee did nothing wrong, I have no choice but to back him up. But he, but he was wrong. What the hell are you talking about? Besides, player, it's not as if your tag team titles were on the line. Although now they will be at Survivor Series. That may be, but I'm not done with Eddie Guerrero. Yeah, they do have to actually beat us. Let's have DQ. I'm going to lay down the wall with Latino Heat tonight and show him that that was the last time he cheats in the ring against me. If he thinks he's going to get away with it. Speaking of getting away, you silly little swine. You and RVD seem to have gotten away with Z WWE tag titles, huh? Eh? The hell? Rene Dupree does not think that you should be able to come to SmackDown and steal our titles without some payback, no? Is this how we actually talked back in the day? So how about you and I go one-on-one -on -one tonight to how you say, settle the score? Or maybe you are afraid of Fifi and the French tickler, eh? Whoa. I think the only thing I'm afraid of is your breath. Listen, cheese eater. I'd be happy to take you on. Cheese eater? That's an insult? For real? But I'm just a little busy tonight with A. Guerrero. Why don't you snack on some snails and take a number? Now hold on a second there, dog. We can work this out. Tonight... You will in fact face Eddie Guerrero and you will also face Rene Dupree in a triple threat match. Now believe that. I don't think I've had a triple threat match yet, so shouldn't be too big of a deal. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of interrupted mat uh, moves and uh... the following triple threat contest is Yeah, probably just interrupting moves. Introducing first from Paris, France. This is an interesting uh, at entrance. Pounds, I Dupree. sort of remember the dog, Fifi. They did a pretty good job of the dog just kind of going around, not knowing what the hell's going on. I actually kind of feel bad for the dogs because uh, I mean they had to go on the road with the t all the the superstars and. You know, I think sometimes they would like, I think the Bulldogs said they would like fuck with their dog or whatever by feeding it shit to give it diarrhea or not them. I think other superstars would like feed the dog shit that it wasn't supposed to eat so it would get diarrhea in the car with the Bulldogs, which kind of funny, but it's still sad that they would, you know, do that to the poor dogs. And, you know, putting them out in front of, you know, tens of thousands of screaming fans and stuff like that. You know, it's probably not a good uh, experience for the board dogs. What the fuck was Rene Dupree doing? It literally just ran to the other side of the ring and did nothing. Jeez. This game is ridiculous with, like, interrupting moves being hit with other moves and stuff like that. The physics, I know that's why a lot of people like these games. I'm sure it's hilarious in multiplayer, but when you do stuff like that in single play, I mean, boy oh boy, is it a massive pain in the ass. It's kind of just not, it takes the fun out of it sometimes. So far, I haven't come across, you know, uh, it, it hasn't been that bad, though. But still irritating every time it happens. Like I say, I always compare it to like single player Mario Party or something like that, you know. It's fun when there's a whole lot of horse shit and cheating and, and luck and bullshit and stuff like that when it's like you and your friends, but if you're playing like Mario Party and there's even just one CPU and the CPU starts to do good, 
Not because he's actually good, but simply because he keeps getting all the, the luck and the favor and the high rolls and horse shit. Or the like, god forbid the single player modes in that game, like Mario Party 7. Man, now that, that shit is so unfun. That is probably some of the most... I played those games single player because I didn't have it. It's always really when I was younger, but... Man, there is nothing more irritating poor shits, just an unfun playthrough of any game ever than a uh, single player Mario Party. I feel bad, maybe the Mario Party DS was a different story, but I do genuinely feel bad for uh, for all the kids that had got stuck only doing you know single player Mario Party. That's something I don't wish on anybody. Not just from a irritation standpoint, but I mean, come on, that's a party game. You should never have to play a party game by yourself. Unless if you're an asshole. you guys ever checked out uh, Rene Dupree's podcast? I'm not really sure what to think of it. Because there's quite a bit of good stuff about it, but there's also a lot of negative stuff. Uh, so, for example, he I think the guest that he gets is really cool because it's a different in the sense of uh, instead of like the major stars of like all the podcasts and memorable mid cars and stuff like that. And I, this might sound like an insult when I say it, but it's, it's honestly not. He kind of all most of his guests are kind of uh, the people from like the ruthless aggression era and uh, a little bit of the attitude era and PG era and stuff like that like the really lower mid card people that probably other than like random shoot interviews would never really have like a, an appearance on the podcast to kind of really share their stories so on that aspect it's really cool that said I feel like there are times where they kind of bullshit a little bit but that's every podcast you pretty much listen to. I think there's always a little bit of, uh, we'll call it working on this podcast. But uh, another thing that kind of irritates me is, like, uh, Paul London is really cool on his podcast and stuff, and he's pretty entertaining. And uh, can tell very good stories and all that sort of stuff. And uh, the James guy, I mean, he seems pretty cool. I mean, all the clips that I see, he doesn't really say much. Which, I think Conrad Thompson has kind of made it to where, like, the, the secondary podcast, those guys, like, kind of like a partner in that sense, rather than just, like, hey, you know, answering, you know, speaking the questions so that way the, the actual guy on the podcast can actually, you know, speak and tell the stories and stuff like that. I think that's a reason why a lot of people don't like podcasts by Conrad Con Conrad Thompson. But uh, I don't know. I actually liked uh, something to wrestle with. A three weeks and stuff isn't too bad to watch from now and then. Every now and then, grilling with Jim Ross. I think is the podcast with uh, those two. Jim Ross has some interesting stories, and I think Jim Ross is a pretty trustworthy guy in comparison to say you know Eric Bischoff. Or Bruce Pritchard, but I think more so uh, with, with Renee's podcast, you know, I think like as I was trying to make my point before I get sidetracked as always, uh, something that always irritates me is the quality of Renee Dupree's camera on his podcast, like it's, it's always pretty terrible, oh jeez. Oh wow. Oh, shit. Okay. Damn. Wow, it is it, it is so amazing and rare in a WWE game where you are not getting your asses kicked in cutscenes. Like, in Day of Reckoning 1, like, RVD would have, you know, gotten his punch reversed and his ass whipped in that cutscene. We both would have gotten our asses kicked. Dude, I can't believe that guys like Booker T and Eddie would go off the deep end like they did last week. I mean, I've teamed up with both of them before, and it's not like them to get all worked up like that. 
I know what you mean, but I know from experience that when you're the champion, you're a target, and some folks will do whatever it takes to get a shot at your title. I guess Eddie and Booker have gold in their eyes. Man, look at my model compared to RVD's. But this week, we're going to keep those guys right where we can see them. You've got a match against Booker, and I've got one against Eddie. That way, we can keep track of their extracurricular activities. Man, I feel like they give us the, like, the lamest lines in these games. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to have to probably go with a singles match because I, I don't have the stats for submission. And, I mean, it's... We've already had two steel cage matches. Like having multiple one on one matches, that's fine, but you know, we're wearing out the, the steel cage as well. Yeah, what do you guys think of Rene Dupree's podcast? Because I think there's a lot of interesting things on there. Um, I, I watched a clip uh, not too long ago of uh, Woke Key was on the show and talking about how he was like protecting the, the, protecting the roster and stuff for everybody and stuff like that. I don't know, I just know there's a lot of, uh, that's what I mean when there's a lot of bullshit. Like, I kind of don't really believe Loki or Caval from WWE, if you will, um, on a lot of the stuff he says, because a lot of people don't have very kind words to say about him. But, you know, once again, I mean, like, it's Rene Dupree's camera that kind of gets me the most, because he has, like, really shitty mic, his lighting is always super awful. And uh, I don't know, like, he, I don't know, he's kind of like me in the sense of he feels like he can barely form sentences properly at times, like he can barely understand them, but the difference is I'm like a jackass YouTuber and he's like a, you know, at one point was a wrestling superstar, but maybe I'm just being way, way, way too harsh on the guy. So like I said, I mean, I actually have watched quite a few of his clips and, uh, it's definitely one of the most unique podcasts I've seen just because of what it can offer, you know? Like, he's had guests like uh, Sylvan. Um, I think Conway was on there. I can't remember. Uh, Maven was on there before he really started his uh, rise in the YouTube scene, I believe. Um, let me think of another one. Um, there's quite a few, like Kid Cash. You know, like, he was an ECW guy, but obviously he was around for a little bit. Uh, Booth was aggression era. And they kind of just talked about, you know, they go on and they talk about the politics of, uh, you know, the the Ruth of during the ruthless aggression era, like the politics that went on, and guys like Triple H, and that whole thing. RVD was on there like a few times, and that's pretty cool. He's always a really great storyteller. And I don't know, RVD definitely feels like a genuine guy at times too. I think even. But like, I think a little bit of the hypocrite, the hypocrisy or whatever that's on that podcast, like they kind of like to talk shit about a lot of people, which, you know, that's just how it is in the wrestling industry, right? Uh, and that's how it is in the, uh, you know, the, it's kind of like, you know, in wrestling in general, you know, like they were talking about how, uh, they had issues with Ken Kennedy. And then like, I see there's one clip where they have Ken Kennedy on the show. So... I don't know, like, what the hell's the deal with that, you know what I mean? Like, it kind of comes across as, like, uh, high school teenagers and stuff like that. Like, at the very least, like, when people like uh, Eric Bischoff or Bruce Prichard talk crap about someone, a lot of times they'll, like, it's not someone that you can actually see them, like, talking to later on, if you get what I mean. So it's just kind of weird in that sense. Speaking of which, it's kind of sad. Once again, getting old here, folks, but, uh... I remember Ken Kennedy when he had the beautiful blonde hair and stuff like that. Well, I guess beautiful is, uh, subjective, but... I remember when he had, like, you know, his blonde hair and stuff like that. Him and WWE and a little bit of TNA is Ken Anderson and stuff, but... Man, now he's bald. He's, he's old, and it's just so... Unfortunate to see. But that's just how a lot of guys are in the industry. There's a lot of wrestlers that have to go bald. Which I guess is that's just how it works for a lot of men. 
it's just sad when you see it. Especially when they were, uh, you remember watching them when they had luscious hair and stuff like that. It's so weird to think like Stone Cold, they even though he was, his most iconic look is when he was bald and stuff. Uh, I mean, he was known for having pretty luscious hair back in the day, you know, stunning Steve Austin. He was known as pretty much like a Hollywood pretty boy. Uh, then you had superstar Steve Austin with the long hair. I don't know, that attire he wore with the orange tank top and like, what were they, like sweatpants and stuff? I mean, come on, that was just, that was probably one of the worst outfits I've seen anybody wear, like a main event guy. But, I mean, it was that long hair. It was beautiful. So, I mean, it was still kind of thing at the time, I think. And that's why he went bald and shaved his head and all this other stuff. But still, sad to see. I don't know, player. It's true that as general manager, I've got a lot of pull around here. But what you're asking involves Raw. Now, you know I don't have any jurisdiction there. Come on, Teddy. We've got to at least try. I mean, you have to admit, having her here would definitely be a good thing for ratings, right? Jeez, this is getting a little ridiculous. Imagine the lineup of Divas SmackDown could have if Tori Wilson was joined by... Stacy Keebler. Listen up, dog. I know you want Stacy here, but there's no draft lottery lined up. And even if there were, there's no guarantee Stacy's number would be picked. The only way to get her here would be The only way to get her here would be to propose a trade. Well there you go. Isn't there someone on SmackDown roster that might want to trade to Raw? What about look player, I didn't sign you up to make personal decisions. Or personnel decisions. SmackDown's already got a general manager, and you're looking at him. You feel me? Now you're right. Stacy would be a great asset to have, so it's not out of the question. But correct me if I'm wrong, Kai, but didn't you and Stacy end on bad terms, dog? I mean, what makes you think she'd want to come here and get back with you? Maybe she's happy to be as far away from you as she can get. Damn, Teddy's really laying it in here. No, there was a misunderstanding, that's all. I know if I could just get a chance to explain myself, she'd realize that. This is kind of pathetic. The problem is, I haven't been able to see her since Unforgiving, and she isn't exactly returning my calls. Oh god. Son, I hope you know what you're doing. Okay, feel this. Next week is Survivor Series. Now that's a cross-brand pay-per-view. That means Eric Bischoff will be there, so maybe we can get a meeting with him about this. But you have to promise to abide by the decisions of the general managers. I don't think he has a choice. If we have this conversation with Bischoff, our decision will be final. You feel me? If you get yourself any more involved than that, I'm going to reconsider my generosity. I feel like we're going to be taking advantage of that generosity. Sure thing, Teddy. Whatever you say. Just let me know what I need to do. I'll do that. But tonight, you've got a match against one of your Survivor Series opponents, Booker T. And he's requested the match to be no disqualification. You better go. And, you better go and get ready. You better go and get yourself ready, player. Jeez, man. I can read, folks. Take my goddamn word for it. All right. <laughs> I kind of don't really like how Eddie and Booker, Booker especially, just kind of has no real role in this storyline, other than they're just. Just henchmen. Come on out here, punk. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the way I, the reason I say it's kind of pathetic, you know, about the whole Stacy situation is, you know, I know there might be some people that are saying, nah, you gotta fight for girls, all this other stuff, and I wouldn't say it's on a simping level or anything like that, but it's kind of like a. If she's not, you didn't get the, we didn't get the opportunity to explain ourselves, yes. But I mean, come on, she's not returning our calls. That's a bit much for my, in my taste. But I don't know, maybe I'm just, I'm not exactly a romantic or anything like that, so. 
I just don't really like the way that the storyline's heading. It's kind of making us look a little nuts. Like, even calling her out on freaking SmackDown that one week. You know, uh, I don't know. I just hope it doesn't get any worse. Especially since, I mean, like I, I mentioned it like 10 times before, we're like, this is essentially, a, it doesn't necessarily have to be a self-insert. But yeah, we're using our created superstar. We don't have a choice to pick a non-created superstar in this game. And they're giving us Stacy Keebler as like a girlfriend and stuff like that. Like this is it's kinda weird, man. But then again, I know there's a lot of young fans around this time who well, maybe not also maybe not all of them were young, but fans around this time who wish they could have dated Stacy Keebler. I think she kinda had a an innocent factor to her. I'll give her that. Like, naturally, I should say. Rather than, uh, I, I think it's kind of the WWE that made it out to be, you know, all this weird sexual stuff. But that's that. Uh, then again, I mean, she's doing all that stuff and no issues, so I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I guess I'm projecting. But it's cool that she never caved under the pressure and, you know, got implants or whatever there's like a story about that with uh Mick Foley and stuff like that so it's cool that she's you know stands up for herself and whatnot although I don't think her acting career ever really worked out for her because that was kind of what she <laughs> oh geez the poor ref that had to fucking hurt but uh I think that's what she kind of used the WWE for to begin with, which just not WWE in general, like she was also in WCW, but I think that was kind of what she uh, used wrestling for, which is kind of like another step in her acting career. I'm a big fan of George Lopez, so I remember her role on that show and stuff, but obviously I don't remember her doing anything else. So I mean, I don't know what happened with her. It's also interesting, there's a few people that, uh, I believe were, uh, like, ch you know, Chick Magnus or whatever, if you can even call it that, because, you know, obviously there's Chick Magnet Punk, of course, and I mentioned in an earlier episode about Carlito, I think another guy that, uh, got, like, a bunch of girls was, uh, Test, because, uh, I know he dated Kelly Kelly for a little while, apparently, once again, on the Renee Dupree podcast, they said that, I guess... He would like to give her Dutch ovens or something like that, which I guess like when they were uh, under the covers or something like that, I guess he would like fart and hold her under the covers if you don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's just, that's just an interesting story I heard. I don't think it's anything sexual or anything really, but it's just like so weird that like Tess is kind of that dude, I guess. But like, I think also he was with a... Uh, Maybe I'm just mistaking it for the on-screen stuff, but I thought that Tess also dated Stacey Keebler, but maybe I'm wrong. Let me also know about this topic on uh, things. I don't usually like to bring uh, race or politics into things or whatever, but I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say on this topic. I always wondered why uh, Stevie Ray, Booker T's uh, brother, never came into WWE and did Harlem Heat. And uh, I think the clear, the obvious thing there is 100% like, okay, you know, it wasn't a WWE creation. They wouldn't have been able to use it correctly. Jeez. Again. Where the hell did RVD come from? Man, that's pretty awesome. Van Damme. Oh. Damn. All right, come on, guy. Oh, jeez. There we go. Now we're looking like chumps as usual. But I'll continue my points uh, for the next match of uh, Stevie Ray. So let me see if I got this straight. You want what? I think you heard me the first time, dog. I want to discuss the possibility of trading Stacy Keebler to SmackDown. Oh, the picture of Teddy Wong in the background. It's hilarious. Now, what do you think about that? 
We're gonna be behind Eric Bischoff. What do I think about it? I think Kai put you up to this. Yeah, I don't know why I'm there. And what if I did ask Teddy about it? Is it such a ridiculous proposal? I have to admit, it's not the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. For instance, it's not as ridiculous as SmackDown hiring a superstar who, let's see now, was involved in the only canceled WrestleMania main event in history. You're the one who canceled it, pal. Missed another main event at Unforgiven? Was fired from Raw in utter disgrace and is probably still in possession of the World Heavyweight title he stole. Oh, and did I mention that SmackDown gave this upstanding citizen a lifetime contract? So no, I have to admit that compared to all of that, Raw trading away Stacey Keebler is not so ridiculous. Yeah, I shouldn't have been here. Eric Bischoff still holds a grudge. So let me just give you a simple answer. No. Bischoff, that's not fair. Everything you said about me is save it. I was done with your act when I canned you from Raw. Why should I even entertain any idea, any idea that will make you happy when all you've done is make my life miserable? As far as I'm concerned, this conversation is over. So if you'll excuse me, gentlemen, and they still don't have a world title. Teddy, you've got to do something. Look, Bischoff, I feel you, but I think we've got Kai all wrong. He might be a little headstrong, but I don't think he's a thief. Look, I agree with Kai that Stacy would be a nice addition to SmackDown. In the interest of business, is there anything that SmackDown has that Raw might want to trade for Stacy Keebler's contract? Hmm, now that you mention it, there is. In case you two haven't heard, Raw has been without a World Heavyweight title belt for a while now. I've heard. You want Stacy? Fine. How about this? I'll give you Stacy's contract if you give the Raw Superstar of my choice an opportunity for the WWE Championship. Oof. But when my Superstar wins it, he can bring the WWE title to Raw and I'll finally have a replacement for my missing title. You gotta be out of your tree, Bischoff. <laughs> that ain't never gonna happen. Well, that's the only offer I'm going to give you, so I guess that settles that. Sorry Kai, I guess it's no deal. I'll be sure to say hello to Stacy for you. Man, what a dick. Wong, if you need me, you know where to reach me. Why don't I go and find Stacy here and talk to her then? What? Teddy, do it. I can represent SmackDown, I can be anyone on the Raw roster. It's a sure thing. Think of how great that will be for SmackDown. Jesus, Kai is insane, folks. Come on, Teddy, let's make the deal. You can count on me. Sorry, player, no can do. It's absolutely out of the question. I like you, dog, but I ain't gonna risk losing SmackDown's top title just so you can try and get your hoochie mama back. Oh boy. Besides, call me crazy, but I think that our WWE Champion, John Cena, might have something to say about it. It's not a risk. I'm telling you, and I'm telling you this conversation is over. You feel me? By the way, if I'm not mistaken, you should be concentrating on Eddie and Booker anyway. After they beat you down like that last week, I think that you and RVD had better be ready to defend your WWE Tag Team titles against them tonight. That is true. I suggest you forget about Eric Bischoff and go get ready for your match. Alright, so my thing, and I know people have uh, different opinions from me, and I should probably not really bring this up in a way. But like, here's my thought process on it. So like, I seen an interview because I always wonder why Stevie Richard, uh, Stevie Ray, not Stevie Richard, Stevie Ray, why he was never in WWE when uh, Booker T, especially, was kind of a, a big star in, in WWE. 
and uh, he said that I always kind of figured it was like, well, you know, Harlem Heat wasn't a WWE creation, and you know, we wouldn't have been used very well and stuff like that. I can kind of agree with that. With that assessment, I, I agree with full sale, right? I've talked about in the past how I don't think Vince McMahon intentionally sabotages WCW wrestlers, much to most people's, uh, you know, disagreement. But I think that because Vince never understands what made people great in uh, WCW and actually watches WCW or ECW and, you know, he's kind of stubborn in the way of like, well, this is my land, so you're going to get over in my way or else you're not getting over in any way. That's kind of how I look at it, but I think with Harlem Heat, yeah, they would face that issue right there. However, Stevie Ray kind of made an issue about uh, race. So he said that, you know, he's looked at other black WWE guys, and he did mention the WCW stuff, but he also looked at, you know, he said that his brother was made a fool of, and when he was serious in WCW, he said that, uh, I think a few other black wrestlers I just can't think of them off the top of my head but he kind of insinuated that Vince was racist and uh, you know since he was black you know he could only get over a new day he specifically was a new day about how like they dance and stuff like that and how you know he would refuse to dance and how his brother was all about you know being labeled as an entertainer and all that other stuff and my whole thing on that is I don't know if I entirely agree with him the fact that you know those guys you know first off they're over and i think that's just you know a big part of why they're over you know new day and stuff like that worker t i mean they had personality and you know if dancing's a little bit a part of that or whatever you know what's the big deal you know which you know uh i think the other thing about it is is that um i think that it's not just a black people thing i think you can look at pretty much so many people just in general and you know maybe they'll push them and uh you know it doesn't work out in a serious way and so uh you know then they'll give them like a weird goofy thing look at lance storm he ended up being a goofy dancing guy you know and being paired up with gold dust gold dust once again is another good example you know he came from you know he was dustin rose and wcw thing became gold dust um and obviously, you know, that had some weird, goofy comedy associated with it. But I think a big part of what made Gold Dust memorable and loved is not only his weird, crazy stuff in 19, in, you know, the new gen era, but because he did all that weird, funny stuff, I think that helped him. I think, it, and he was obviously white. I think, you know, you could kind of say that for so many people. Um, Chavo Guerrero, you know, he eventually became, I think it was Kerwin White. Stupid idea. Mexicals, once again, you know. Uh, Mexican wrestlers who came out with were apparently trying to fight Mexican stereotypes by embracing them or something like that. They came to the ring and rode on lawnmowers and wore janitor outfits and stupid stuff like that. But the idea is is that, you know, even like WWE guys like Hyden Ray, like he came in, you know, and he was freaking talking about little Jimmy, an imaginary friend, and then he had the whole you know, then he had the serious time in his career for a brief period before he became another goofy comedy character. Snitsky is another example. Uh, you know, and he was a former NFL linebacker guy. I think that stuff doesn't just go to, you know, black wrestlers. I, I think, you know, there's... I think it definitely goes to, you know, could be anybody on the roster when you really think about it. So, I mean, I think to kind of, like, make it a thing about race... I don't know. I mean, I've always had my disagreement. I'm not... Let me make this clear once again. I'm not saying that the stuff when, like, Vince McMahon misuses, you know, former WCW guys or, uh, you know, ECW guys or whatever like that. I'm not saying Vince is in the right. Don't get me wrong on that aspect. I'm saying that I don't think it's this... As much as some people might say it, even people in the industry, but because of the people who work closely with Vince, and maybe, once again, you can argue... You know, people like Bruce Pritchard and Paul Heyman, they're not the most honest either. So maybe you could say that, yeah, they're just kind of covering for Vince. But I don't know. Like, I definitely have... I definitely agree with the concept of why would you pay someone millions and hundreds of thousands of dollars just to bury them? 
That doesn't make any sense to me. And I know some people say, oh, well, Vince is a millionaire. And, you know, he just likes to play with people and stuff like that. I'm not even denying the fact that he likes to play and mess with, around with people and all that sort of stuff either. But I don't think that it's a conscious effort of, oh, well, you know, clearly because they were WCW guys, they have to, you know, be buried and stuff like that. Even looking Rey Mysterio right now is a perfect example. He came in and was pushed right away. But... I don't know. I think there's a lot of good examples of WCW guys who got pretty good pushes in the WWE. So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to check out next week's episode as well. And above all else, please remember to have a nice day.